Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from Luke 9, verses 28 through 43, and can be found on page 66 in the New Testament of your Pew Bible. Now, about eight days after these sayings, he took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And as he was praying, the appearance of his countenance was altered and his raiment became dazzling white. And behold, two men talked to him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure, which he was to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they wakened, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. And as the men were parting from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is well that we are here. Let us make three booths, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. As he said this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my son, my chosen, listen to him. And when the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silence and told no one in those days anything of what they had seen. On the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met him. And behold, a man from the crowd cried, Teacher, I beg you to look upon my son, for he is my only child, and behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out. It convulses him till he foams and shatters him, and will hardly leave him. And I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long am I to be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon tore him and convulsed him, but Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father and they were all astonished at the majesty of God. Here ends today's holy word of God. May he add his blessing to the hearing, understanding and acceptance of his most holy word. Amen. Now you hear this word of scripture as the ushers wait upon us for this offering. Remember our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is much more blessed to give than to receive.
Most gracious and heavenly God, we ask you to accept these tithes and these offerings that we bring unto you and help us continually build up the body of Christ through this your church. And we ask this in his precious name. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We're human. Interesting to know that, isn't it? To know that we're human. And that can be a strange thought sometimes. You know, I was with a bunch of children today. And one of them looked at me and said, hey, Rev. I said, what? He said, "Uh, guess what? I said, what? He says, "Uh, I'm Spider-Man. I said, you are? He said, yeah. He said, watch. So I watched him, and he ran against the wall. He went, I said, now what are you going to do? He said, I'm going to climb the wall. So he goes like this. I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm climbing the wall. I said, okay. And he went, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm still climbing the wall. Can you see? I said, yeah, I'm watching. And he went, I said, okay. I said, are you getting up the wall? He says, no, I don't know what's happening. I'm not climbing the wall. I said, I thought you were Spider-Man. He said, well, I thought I was Spider-Man. No, I said, oh. I said, what's that mean? He says, I don't know. He says, I guess I might not be Spider-Man. You know, so we had a long conversation about reality and not reality being human and not being human and it was really it was really cute as he was talking to me about he said well i don't understand he said spider-man can do it and i said yeah i said you know i said you know when i was little i used to watch my one of my cousins she thought she was mary poppins he said he did she did and i said yeah she took an umbrella and jumped off the garage and he said what happened i said She went all the way down to the ground. He said, you mean she didn't float down to the ground? I said, nope. The umbrella went like this, and she went right down. And she said to me afterwards, that was my cousin Laurie. And she said to me, she said, oh, I guess I can't be Mary Poppins. I said, no, I guess you can't be Mary Poppins. So reality check sometimes is something we need to think about. We're human. But that's okay. It's okay to be human. You know, because we can still accomplish so much by being human. Because we have God. We have God in our life. God helps us to do extraordinary things. He helps us to understand what we can do, how we can do it, and the way we should do it. When we look at the relationship that we have with God, when we look at the relationship that we can continually have with God, God helps us to see those things. In the scripture that was read to us just a few moments ago, we see what he did. Eight days later, he took Peter and James and John with him to the hills to pray. Now, we don't have to go to the hills to pray, do we? We can pray where we are. I pray in the car. I pray that another car doesn't hit me or I don't hit another car. Think about it for a moment. You know, many times we have to think about things like that. And as he was praying, his face began to shine, and his clothes became dazzling white and blazed with light. Then two men began to speak to him. Moses and Elijah. Now, this is New Testament, and remember, I always talk about the Old Testament too, how it comes together. Moses and Elijah. Those are Old Testament prophets. You know, and here's the guys with him saying, "Uh uh-oh, 
his Moses and Elijah that we know about, we've read about, because you've got to remember, here's Jesus talking to Moses and Elijah, and they're saying, wow, how does he know them? So now they're thinking, well, here's Jesus, he's human, he's like us, but he must be extra human, because now he's talking to somebody that is beyond human in Moses and Elijah. So now all this stuff is coming together for them. They're beginning to realize that, gee, this guy, all this stuff he's been teaching us is true. But remember, as we're going through Lent, all the stuff that happens. They were splendid in appearance, glorified to see, and they were speaking of his death at Jerusalem carry out accordance with God's plan. We always have to remember God's plan, the whole plan and what happens during that. Peter and the others had become very drowsy and had fallen asleep. Now they woke up and saw Jesus covered with brightness and glory and the two men standing with him. Have you ever had a dream, a real vivid dream, and you're not sure if it's real or not real, if you're really awake or not awake, and you have this dream and you're not sure, and the reality you don't know, you know, that's what these men were going through. As Moses and Elijah started to leave, Peter, all confused, not knowing what he was saying, blurted out, Master, this is wonderful. Why don't we build a booth for them and a booth for you, and we can stay here. Now, that would have been a wonderful thing for them, but as you know, that was not in the plan of God. The plan of God was altogether different than that because the plan of God was for Jesus to come back down off the mountaintop, mountaintop experience, and how we talk about mountaintop experiences, all right? These three men had an opportunity to have a mountaintop experience with Jesus. We, at times in our lives, have an opportunity to have mountaintop experiences. The trouble is, as humans, we have mountaintop experiences up here. Trouble is, we also have valleys. Mountaintops always have valleys. And we come down into those valleys sometimes, and that's what we call sometimes a depression. When we have problems, we have difficulties, because we're humans. But you've got to understand, even though we're at a mountaintop, and then we hit a valley, it doesn't mean that God's not with us in the valley. Because God is with us. 23rd Psalm. Remember, God is with us in that valley also. Because he's looking on the green pastures, the still waters, he's looking to bring us back up again to the mountaintop experience. It's through prayer. It's through understanding. It's through the compassion of our Lord and Savior. But we need to understand mountaintops are wonderful, but there's always valleys in life too. And we need to understand where we are in that relationship. And a voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. So my question is to us, do we listen to him? I know I attempt to listen to him. Do I all the time? No. I'll be honest with you, I don't listen to him all the time. I'm human. Do I listen to my wife all the time? No. Should I? Yes. Makes life easier if I listen to her all the time. But I don't. And when I don't, I get into trouble. When you don't listen to Jesus, guess what? You get into trouble. Because we go our own way, because we're human. We take that other road. Now eventually that road is going to bring you back through the valley up to the mountaintop where you want to be. That's what it's all about. We want to try to stay on the mountaintop, but we're not always going to be there. So the important thing is to realize that we need to have Jesus 
in our lives. You know, I think these things all the time. I get them here, I get them here, but I don't do them all the time. I should, but I don't. I bet you if you ask Pastor Peter, he'd tell you the same thing. Peter and I talk about it all the time, but we're not successful in doing it all the time because we're human, and humans are prone to mistakes. There's only one perfect one, and that was Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to be approaching this open meal in a very few moments. And as I explained it to the scouts, it's the same thing for us. We're coming to this meal for it's an open meal. It's open meal for us. We come from the east and the west, the north and the south. We gather about the table of our Lord, not because we must, but because we may. And that's the important thing. Not because we must, but because we may. It's been prepared for us to receive the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior. And we need to understand where that's from. And we thank Christ for the presence and for the gifts of the spiritual food. We're faithful, and we need the power of the Holy Spirit to be blessed into our lives. And also the presence and also the leisure to be gathered about his table. So prepare your hearts and minds for the coming of the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us join together in our communion hymn, Be Known to Us in the Breaking of the Bread, on page 280.